Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. I'm going to show you a little video about how to use this MSD 6AL2 programmable, at least how to set up the timing curves and some other stuff. I figured this might be beneficial to some of you because I had a hard time figuring it out or finding out information on YouTube. There may be more now. I haven't searched in a while. But this may be helpful. This is from the, this is a 477 big block Chevy that we used for the engine masters. And that's actually the, the, uh, cool or the ignition box we use with it. But I'm going to show you the one that's actually in the truck. So use the same thing. Those are forgotten. We did a bunch of other videos. This is my S10. And um, what it's got here is got the Holly Sniper EFI. And I told you that even though the Holly Sniper EFI can control timing, I'm not letting it do it. Because the biggest reason for me is I didn't want, if the sniper fails, I'm just going to not work at all. So I have the MSD actually control the timing while the sniper is still controlling the fuel. And the other reason for that is if I want to switch to a carb, all I do is I change out that regulator because i actually have another one it changed out the regulator and i just bolt the carburetor on the ignition will fire and everything will work if i had the sniper controlling the ignition i couldn't do that because if you remove the sniper then nothing's controlling the ignition it won't fire because remember you need fuel and spark to fire so um that's reason for it now some of you are like well that's antiquated and this can't do as much i mean to tell you it, it, it can the 6al2 box if you put a map sensor in it, it could control um boost timing it has two rev limiters. I mean, it could do most, I, almost all the stuff that the sniper could do, except for this. The sniper, well, I think you can actually do that in MSD too. Um, the sniper can do timing based on manifold pressure and stuff, but I really think that the MSD might be able to do that. I've never played with that to have it do it. I have it strictly based off RPM, not off manifold pressure. So I'm, if I hooked up a map sensor, I'm fairly certain I could. i just not having it do it. So anyway, let me show you some of the things that go with it and what to look out for. Because the box is relatively cheap. Um, the box ran, my cost at the time was like, was 370. I have a clue what it did cost now. Um, of course, I have uh, dealers again from. But before you do that, here's what you need to know. Your, whatever timing you have, and this is probably gonna be the same thing even if you ran the sniper yet by ignition, you must lock out your distributor. So this is an MSD distributor, but the timing is completely locked out. Um, there's no advance giving it inside the distributor. So there's nothing going on there. It's pretty much just turning the rotor and that's it. The rotor stays fixed. It does its job. So that's the first step. You have to have a distributor that's locking out the timing. Now you can do it off a crank trigger. This one doesn't. A crank trigger, for those who don't know, is this. That's a crank trigger. So you can set your timing based off that. Those are very nice and way more accurate. And if you ever pull, have to pull an intake manifold, your timing will stay the same because it's based off the crank trigger. However, this just doesn't have it. So, huh, locked out distributor, uh, timing set at a certain point. Then what you wanna do is what I did, is you're gonna set your ignition kinda high, which you can't see on the marks here, but I'm just kinda showing you down where the balancer is, time pointer, or whatever. Um, you're gonna wanna set your ignition high, and I'm gonna explain why. The MSD box and um, most all ignition box can only take away timing. In other words, you can only retard timing. You can't advance it. Now, some of you say, no, it, it can advance it. it. It can't only if you have more than enough. So it, pretty much it acts as a retard. So um, the point being is, if you set it at say 30 degrees, you fixed your mechanical timing at 30 degrees, you'll never be able to achieve 35 degrees advanced timing with the computer. It won't do it. It will only go to 30. So what I've done is I, um, by the way, the grid works similar to this. I set this up at 38 degrees of timing, which I know you can't see because I'm not gonna fire it up and show you, but I set it up at 38 degrees timing because this is more of a fail safe deal as well. If the um, ignition box for whatever reason decides it doesn't wanna act up or work right and it has a failure, the most timing we'll ever give is 38 degrees, which is about three degrees more than what this is, but it won't damage anything. So it's not gonna make its peak power there because on the dyno, which I, I'm gonna do another video about how important it is to dyno your engine, not chassis dyno, engine dyno your engine. It is so important for many reasons, but I know at 38 degrees, it's not gonna hurt it. It's not making its best power there, but it's not gonna damage anything. So if the ignition box, for whatever reason, doesn't work or messes up, most it's ever gonna give 38. So it's not gonna tear up the motor. It just won't run as good as it could. So that's first, uh, one of the steps. So first, uh, lock out your distributor, or should have one. Set your timing at a higher mark. Um, you could go, if you've been on the dyno, go like three degrees more than what you were on the dyno. And that's what you should run it because your your um, box will take out timing. And I'll show you in just a second. So those are those two things to start off with. So let's go on to the next. 
Now, in the truck, I've mounted mine in the glove box. Please don't bash me in this. I really don't care. Um, some people mount them in the firewall, and I promise you it's cooler here than it is there. So, uh, anyway, this is it. It's in there, and it takes this plug. And I'll go ahead and show you this plug here. This is what it looks like on the other end. There's a good news and bad news with this. The bad news is, whenever they designed this, the computers must have all ran on this pin plug, which I don't know what it's called or how many pin it is. No modern computer has that. No laptop, none of it. So what you need is you need this. I'm going to tell you because it doesn't come in the kit. Um, I don't even know what these things are called. Uh, adapter or something. But you've got to get one and you've got to put a CD in or download the hardware so that the driver works for this. I know that sounds like computer stuff. I'm not a computer genius either, but I know it takes some kind of special hardware for this thing to actually work with your computer. So you can't just plug it in and expect it to work. You actually have to download a driver. I mentioned this because if you go to the track and you just buy one of these at Best Buy, and then let's say it has a DVD disc for you to download the driver, a lot of laptops don't have it, mine don't. So you're gonna get to the track, you can hook it up, and it's gonna say, communication error, I can't read nothing. So you're stuck and you're screwed. So point being is, plus you can't get internet there unless you do your phone as a hotspot, whatever. Point is, I'm just trying to make to you, figure this part out first so it can communicate, otherwise you'll be so frustrated you won't understand what's going on. So there's that. Now at the computer. And I can tell my son messed with my computer. But anyway, uh, just giving you an idea of what's on mine. This right here is what you're looking for. That's the icon. When you buy the digital uh, 6AL2+, Plus, it also comes with a DVD. And you're like, well, how's it on yours if you don't have a DVD drive? I got on the internet and Holly, which now owns MSD, has the software you can download from the website and then it's on here. So pretty simple. You see these two, if you ever see like this one here and this one here, this is for the grid because the Camaro runs the grid, but the truck runs this one. Anyway, so what you can do is you're gonna click on it and it's gonna make a cool sound. And that's like a pro stock running full on. Those are the coolest sounds. Okay, I've got to open up something because it's missing something. So I'm gonna go view. Sometimes you're gonna see like there's a spot missing, like what's going on? And what I wanna see is the run retard curve. That's it right there. And there it pulls it up. This is actually what my timing is. So this is gonna look confusing to several of you, so I'm gonna explain. Remember, it can only retard, it can't add. So this is where you're gonna to have to have a little bit of math skills to figure this out. If I don't do any retard, the timing's at 38 degrees. So if you look, right from the start, at zero RPM, I haven't take out 10 degrees. So technically it's at 28 degrees as soon as I start cranking. So as soon as it turns, it goes 28. And then it starts ramping up. And you might ask why I did that. That's my start retard. So it's easier on the starter to at least get it rolling. Once it's here, I actually want it to advance. And this goes all the way up to 38. And you're like, why is it at 38 degrees? I idle at 1500. So I want it to keep adding timing. That's why this ramp's going up like this. I want it to add timing to get to my desired idle speed. So if it gets the RPM, it's easier for it to climb to it. Then I'm having it back off timing so that it will slow itself down to get back to 1500 RPM or thereabouts. And that really helps with the keeping the idle more steady, especially since it's got more radical cam, it helps it keep the idle steady. Now from this point, you'll notice I start, so here at, I don't know, I think this is like 500 RPM, but I click on it, it'll tell me. It's taking out 2.9, it's almost three. So if you do the math, 38 minus three is 35 degrees right there. And then if I go here, which is what I got, I think I plotted this at 1500, 1500, zero degrees, okay? And then I slow it down about 2000, I have it taking out almost three. So it goes from 35, um, remember you're subtracting, so 38 minus three is 35. So it's 35 degrees there. Now if I look at my curve, I can see I'm actually, this means I'm retarding. If the slope goes down, I'm retarding timing. If it goes up, I'm advancing timing. So if I look at it, I'm actually retarding timing here. And you're like, why are you doing that? And I'll explain it in just a minute. Because it goes all the way down to, clicking on the dot, four. Remember, it's not four degrees. It's four degrees retarded. So 38 minus four is 34 degrees, which is one less than my peak. And the reason why I'm having it drop timing here is because usually when you have any type of spark problems, like where it's pinging, it's within that range where the slope's going down. So if you have it advancing there, usually that's when you'll hear like the pinging. You don't want that, that's pre-ignition and stuff. So I take out timing there. Um, just a heads up on that. So that's part of the reason. The other thing is it really does go through this RPM pretty quick. I keep moving my hands, I'm sorry if I keep shaking. But anyway, um, usually when I hit the gas, it will flash right through this. 
and get to here. Now here's a little bonus tip for you. If you were on the engine dyno and you had your engine graph and everything, you could see um, your peak torque RPM. Wherever peak torque RPM is, if you have the ability like this to retard timing, take out about one to two degrees of timing, 200, degree, 200 RPM before your peak torque, and then start ramping in 200, 200 RPMs after. And what that does, it actually builds more peak torque in that area. There's a little bonus. You know where I learned that? Engine Masters. Here's the biggest thing I, tip I can give most of you. Listen, uh, I'm not trying to be angry about it, but I, when I went to Engine Masters, you know, I had an idea that I knew what I'm doing, but I listened to everybody. I didn't comment on a lot of their stuff. I just wanted to hear what they said. And I actually overheard Judson Matsengill, which own, runs Sam, mention just that case. And someone else had mentioned that, that what they do is they were dropping the timing at peak torque and it actually brought the numbers up by maybe two, three, four foot pounds of torque. It's not a lot, but it's something. So I started doing it from that point on. Now, some people in which you can, I'm just not brave enough yet, well, after this comes in, they'll start ramping in timing actually more than when it made peak power at because it runs faster on the track. I haven't been bold enough to try it. What I mean by that is it may, this thing made peak power at 35 degrees of timing. Some people will run two degrees more than that way up there. So for instance, I should be going through at 7,800 RPM. So I'd bring another dot here. Let me show you how to add a dot. You right click and I'll say add a dot and then you can add one wherever it is. And that will happen. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to get out of it. But that's all you do to click it. And then you can drag the dot up or down, and that's what will have you have your retard. But anyway, I could add one there. And through that range there, it would start adding timing. Because if it slopes up, it's adding timing. So that's how I control the timing on this. But remember, this is all RPM-based. If you ran the sniper, it would have not only based on this, it would also be based off the manifold pressure. So in other words, if it was a high load situation, um, it would take away timing or a, a low load situation. It might add timing. And I do think this has the ability because if you look at this graph here, this is the boost retard curve, which you're like, well, it's not underneath boost. You could add a map sensor to this. It actually has a plug for it. And then what you could do is you could do it the same way where it would take out timing depending on how much boost or, or vacuum you would have. And so in a, in a way, you would still be very similar to what you have with a sniper with, you could base it on not only engine speed, but also the load via vacuum more pressure. But anyway, that's that. I wanted to show you that. Now, here's something that I haven't been able to find, at least not on this. If I want to change my rev limiters, they're actually down here. So notice this. This is You'll see this come up. If you scroll up or down, so I'm just going to go up, it will give me a whole bunch of different things. I don't mess with so much with those, but I do with this. There are three rev limiters. I'm just kind of past it. You have Rev limiter burnout, which I set at 7,800 RPM. And then the rev max, 7,800 RPM, you could do um, also launch RPM at uh, 7,900 or 7,800 RPM as well. And then drop RPM, one, RPM 1,000, I don't have a clue what that is, to be honest with you. But these are your rev limiters. So my main one's at 7,800, and then these ones also kick in. So there's three that helps you. And all you do to change them, you just click on it. I'll say click on this. And then you just type over here, or you can scroll up or down. So you can go in here, and I can click, uh, I, can, I guess not, um, and go up or down with it, with the arrows. And then this is a big one. You need to um, send or save to MSD or save to PC. Either one you can do. So sometimes I save to P P PC, which means a computer. But then after you're done with all this, let's say you made a change, I'm gonna close this out. After you made even a change here, it's not like it's directly, it is communicating with the MSD, but it's not gonna do anything. After you get all that done, like whether you change these rev limiters or whatnot, you have to go up to the top where it says transfer, and it gives you two options. Oops. You can either send from MSD to PC, which means it's communicating with me, or in this case, I can send it from the, P, the computer to the MSD. So if you made any changes here, after you're done making the changes, you have to go up here to PS to MSD, and send it to the um, ignition box. At that point, it will actually have a timing curve because if you just change it here and you click save, you didn't do anything really. I mean, it saves it on your computer, so if you pull the program, you'll see it, but the ignition box will have no idea that you've made any change. You have to actually send it to it, even though it's communicating with it now. So just remember that, okay? Now, if you're ever confused, like, well, did it actually do anything? What you can do is, I'm not starting up my truck, but what you can do is when you start it up, well, you'll see this red line right here. See, it's at zero. When you start it up, it'll actually show it on this line moving on the graph. 
So you can see, well, if it's idling here, you can see this is how much timing it's taking away and so forth. So you can see if it's actually doing what it's supposed to, or you can just go out and verify with a timing light as well. Anyway, this one, this one's pretty good. Uh, it's very nice. The only thing you have to remember is you, you're, you have to have more timing than what you want to do. So that's the big one. And the other thing is you gotta remember this is math skills, you have to subtract. So this is gonna subtracting from what your total timing is before. So whatever that is. Some people set it at 40, some people set it at 45, whatever. Just remember it's subtracting from whatever your total is. This is different from the grid because the grid, it automatically assumes it. You tell it, your first screen, you say, how much, ask how much timing do you have? And I'll just click in 38. And then from that point on, when you set up its um, graph like this, you just tell it what timing you want, 35, 34, and it automatically retards to meet those points. Instead of you trying to figure out yourself, like on this one, uh, to get to 34, I need to subtract four, so I'm gonna take minus four here. So that is different from the grid, but it's not that hard to figure out if you can do subtraction. If you can't, you probably shouldn't be anything involved in engines at all. Anyway, I hope this answers some of your questions, or well, I don't know if I answered any of your questions, but I thought I'd show you this because it's pretty important. And if you are still using mechanical springs and stuff to set your timing and get your curve right, you're wasting your time. Get this ignition box. It's a really cheap alternative. There's other ones that are cheap that do the same thing like this. Do this. There's no sense with you. I'm going to take this weight, which weighs less, and get the silver spring. And then, nope, don't forget this bushing to get my timing right. Just go on the computer. It's super simple. Very simple. Anyway, I highly recommend it. Um, try this. It's cheaper than the grid, and it also acts as an ignition box. Because the MSD grid, you still have to have an ignition box. It's, it's, that's just the computer that runs the timing. You still need an ignition box. This is both in one. So it's a pretty good deal. Anyway, uh, again, thanks for watching. I will do another video about why you should dyno an engine. That's what's on deck for this week. And then also, I'm going to talk about the new engine for this S10 because its heads have come in. Um, and that's pretty exciting. So I've got some news for that. And... Um, Right now, as far as porting wise goes, I'm finishing a Ford intake, a 8.2 Super Victor. Kind of boring. I've already done one of those on a video, so no sense of showing another one. Um, let's see. After that, I got some 18 degree small block Chevy heads I'll be finishing. 13 degree small block Chevy heads I'll be finishing too, especially that intake, which that one's a real doozy. And then from that point, I'll be some profiler big block Chevy heads and um, definitely a BMP intake, another set of Headhunters Ford heads. So a lot in the store for you, but just kind of give you an idea. It's something to look forward to. Since you made it to the end, might as well give you a preview. All right, uh, restaurant recommendation. If you happen to go or be in Broken Arrow, there's a restaurant called uh, Sherry Ann Travolti's. It's an Italian restaurant. It's smaller than my shop. But the guy, uh, when I used to teach school, I don't know if anybody knew that, but he was a student at my school, and him and his family started his own Italian restaurant. It's really small. It's really quaint, and they do a terrific job. And it's in downtown Broken Arrow, a little small building, but very good food. And definitely give it a shot. Um, you'll, you'll like it, but you guys take care. Thanks.